All right, everyone. My name is Rob Holiday. I know it's not full size, but that's because I'm about to get around the video real quick. I'm Rob Holiday. I am a fifth year mechanical engineer at LSU, and I'm going to be reporting on our experiment we did last week about a clap A experiment. Uh, because half of you didn't do it, I just want to kind of give you like the crash course of what it looked like. So this professor is just doing a quick demonstration about how if you lower pressure, water will boil at lower temperatures. And he has the water currently at 82 degrees Fahrenheit. And what he's going to use is a syringe real quick. And then he's going to, he's going to grab it, he's going to pull up, and it's going to lower the pressure. And you'll see the water instantly starts to boil. Crash course, basically the exact same thing we did, except we used a heater plate to help maintain the temperature. Uh, so that way it would take longer to equalize. All right. Full screen. This clicker, man. There we go. All right. So, what is the Clapeyron equation? It's a way of relating the saturation temperature and pressure to enthalpy and specific volume associated with phase change, and like such as taking water from a liquid to a gas. Uh, it's used because you can't measure in like enthalpy and specific volume. It's, it's hard to do directly. All right, so here is the clap aron equation uh, broken down. We have PSAT is the saturation pressure. I don't know why I was like, PSAT saturation pressure. This is the saturation temperature. Then we have the latent heat of vaporization. And then we have our specific volume. Here is our apparatus. Uh, it's in the uh, lab manual. I'm sure the other half of you are going to do it later. But how we start with, we have our 1,000 milliliter flask, which we fill with our working fluid, which is going to be water. And then we have our little vacuum seal. We're going to use the hot plate, so I'll raise the temperature of the water. We have our analog pressure inducer. We have our uh, pressure gauge. We have our air bleed valve. And we have our pump, which will uh, suck the air out, creating a vacuum. And we use the computer to log all our data. All right, so outline of what we're going to do. Uh, we measured the pressure and temperature during uh, the boiling. We started with, uh, uh, as we got to low pressure, we would measure the temperature and see what it boiled at. And then we would cut off uh, the air valve and then let it basically equalize. So it would go from boiling to not boiling. If you were part of our experiment, experiment group last week, you know that that took forever. <laughs> then we are going to plot the pressure versus temperature, and then we're going to calculate and plot the uh, latent heat uh, using the three different ways. Click. All right, so what we started with was we started first boiling without beads, and water at about 100 degrees Celsius boils at about 14.7 atmospheres. And as you can see, as we lower the pressure, uh, creating a vacuum, the temperature at which water boils lowers, and then using the steam tables, we're able to verify this. Going next, we actually ran out of time and we're not able to boil with beads. So I, we took the data from the computer. I don't know if it was last semester or the semester before. And uh, so I can't tell you, you know, if it was necessarily quicker or anything, but after plotting, you can notice that uh, at a lower pressure, water boils at 100 degrees with the beads. So the water would boil at a temperature lower than if the beads weren't there. Then procedure one, uh, we're going to calculate latent heat vaporization using this equation, and then we're going to uh, do a plot. This is what we come out doing our values. Uh, this is latent heat as it relates to temperature. On. The second one is we derive an expression using pressure and temperature, and then we use a curve fit and excel. And we get this nice slope, uh, 0 0.0012. And for the third procedure, uh, it wanted us to use an Excel uh, an analysis. Uh, it was like the analysis tool pack. And it said do data analysis and everything. And basically, we're going to solve for these two constants. I searched Excel forever and could not find how they wanted us, uh, how the lab manual ran it out. So unfortunately, procedure three, I could not solve. I don't know if this is because 
it's my version of Excel. I have the 2016, it didn't come with a tool pack, but it, I was unable to verify. And then uh, for potential uncertainties, this could be a number of things. For example, we use a little rubber stopper, that could have some leaks. The air valve that we use to create the vacuum could have a slight leak. And then all of this is gonna mess up everything. Even the hot plate could not be accurate. So there's just like many potential uncertainties. And in conclusion, the procedure showed how the steam table is like related and everything. And then we did the relationship between pressure and temperature as it translates to the heat of vaporization, and we are able to interpret it. And that is the end of my uh, representation. Does anybody have any questions? Can you go back to um, one of those graphs? That one. Now, um, that tabulate, that black tabulate uh, line, what, where did that come from? So that came from our steam tables. Okay. And right. so did, was there any, um, did you come up with anything as to why the, uh, the green line and the black line kind of vary so much? So I couldn't like really figure it out. We uh, didn't know if it was just because of like, maybe we had some errors in the experiment. I mean, you, you, you were there yeah. forever. Yeah. Like, we, so uh, as far as like, do I figure out why? No, it's inconclusive. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, so why did you use the burner for the, the hot plate? Yes. Oh, I forgot to restate your question. You, he asked, first question was why, uh, what's the black line, what is the purpose? And then Louis just asked, I'll get back to it, why did we use the hot plate? The hot plate is there just to maintain temperature, because in that video I showed you when he lowered the pressure and the water boiled, if you notice, it starts, it stops boiling very quickly. And so we use that to help maintain temperature so that way it boils longer. And then we get that uh, drawn out equalization. Any other questions? Well, that's all we got time for. Oh, cool. Thank you.